Mining update lesson about the industry and job hunt video. Hi, welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters. And in this video, we are going to start to do a weekly video at the end of the week, just covering the prices, a bit of advice about the industry and a job hunt video. So you can have a look at some of the different titles you can put into Seek to get the different results to get the, the jobs that you're chasing. But first, I just want to make it all clear to everybody, if you're list watching this for the first time or listening to me for the first time, um, the best bit of advice that I can give to you is mining is all about the money. Never ever forget that for everybody that's involved in the industry, whether you're a boss or you're a worker, for the majority of people that are in the industry, it's all about the money. So make sure you do your research before you start to jump in, because uh, a lot of people jump in without doing their research. But let's go through the prices first so first off we've got the gold price and for most people this would be the price over here in US dollars that they would be familiar with from the news however this price over here um, over three and a half thousand dollars an ounce is the actual price in the real world and that's the price that um, all the Australian suppliers and producers are getting paid and it's all going through the Perth Mint. So at over $3,500 an ounce, it's all going crazy everywhere and they need lots and lots of people. So if we move over to the coal price, and as we've talked about this before on the channel, you know, the coal price two years ago used to be $400 a ton US, and now it's $100 to $120 a ton US. So that's one of the reasons why there's not as many coal mining jobs around as there were before, and why the wages have sort of stagnated in that area, or even gone backwards a little bit. If we have a look at iron ore, iron ore is around $107 um, a tonne, which is still a really good price. And again, as we've talked about on the channel before, a lot of the predictions for the iron ore price are between that $80 and $120 a tonne mark. So we can probably see it, it, and like we've said, if you look at some of the old videos we've done in the past, you'll be able to see that we've been able to talk about this cycle when it's going up and down, up and down, and it'll continue to do that around the 80 to 100 dollar mark which um, you know is good for the companies but like we've talked about before the majority of these iron ore companies have all gone driverless with driverless trucks um, and the other thing is the copper price the copper price is fourteen thousand five hundred and ninety seven dollars a ton Australian and the reason I say the copper price is that there's a lot of copper mines around Australia at the moment that are doing really well out of a strong copper price and this map is loaded up with all the gold mines and all the base metal mines including copper um, that are doing everything that we need for batteries because while the lithium price and the nickel price has gone down significantly because there's been a, um, a good supply come onto the market um, there's everybody's still chasing copper and gold so these are where the mines are around the country as you can see there's mines all over the place so there's there's potential to get work everywhere and um, I just want to move on to our lesson about mining and in today's lesson I want to talk about wages and as of the start I said that you know mining's all about money it's the same it transfers all the way through so if they've got an oversupply of people like they do in the shutdown space at the moment then that means wages are going to go down um, yeah we've had, there's been a few people lose their bottle lately over the fact that you know wages are going backwards in some areas of the industry while wages are going forwards in others that's just typical I've been in the industry since I was 20 years old and and I've watched wages go up in one section and wages go down in the other and then back up again and down again and up again and it's just purely supply and demand. Because of what's happened with shutdown work, where um, a big project um, around Kalgoorlie got um, shelved a couple of months ago, it's really um, left work thin on the ground and you know whenever the employers see that they've got an oversupply of people they always reduce the wages and it's just like when there's an undersupply of people like there is in the hard rock underground side of things at the moment the wages have to go up because you've got to buy the labor in and you've got to poach off somebody else or you have to train one of the two but the wages in the industry have always ever since i've been in the industry has been really dependent dependent on supply and demand they don't stay up 
if the um, price of the metal that you're mining is going down or the price of the product that you're mining is going down, the wages don't stay up. And if there's an oversupply of people, the wages don't stay up. And like on the flip side of it is, if you're in a really big boom like we're in gold at the moment where the price of the thing that you're mining goes through the roof, then there's a lot of extra money to play with. Um, so wages go up significantly. And if there's an undersupply of people, so if they're chasing experienced jumbo operators, shift bosses, um, bogger operators, charge up people, you know, all those wages end up going through the roof because there's only a limited amount of people for multiple jobs. Um, and the only alternative is to train. And whenever you have to train in mining, it costs you time, which costs you money. Time is always money on a mine site. But also when you train, people generally make mistakes. And sometimes the mistakes that people make can cost a lot of money. It's just part of mining. And, you know, so they'd much rather get an experienced person in, but if they can't get one, they'll have to train. And everybody at the moment in our side of the industry in the hard rock underground area of the industry is um, is screaming for people so people are um, going up through the ranks pretty quickly and that's creating a lot of um, space at the bottom so that moves us into our next phase of the video which is our job hunt phase so if we type underground in to seek uh, you will be able to see all the underground jobs come up so there's lots all over the place and see even in Tasmania there's jobs it's jobs all around the country. It's just everywhere. There's Queensland. If I get down here a bit further, so that's WA. WA again, Mount Isa, Queensland. Yeah, it's just jobs all over the place. Um, Townsville. Yeah, there's, there's work everywhere. So you can go through that. The other thing that, so that's underground. If you type underground into Seek, you'll see all the underground jobs come up. I often type surface into Seek as well and see all the surface jobs come up and you can see that they're looking for drill assistance on the surface drillers offsiders all that sort of stuff and this will be where a lot of your traineeships on the surface come up although there aren't that many around anymore because unfortunately a lot of the surface jobs have been replaced with driverless trucks which sucks but that's just the way it is in the industry so if you're looking for a drive the big dumpies on the surface you might have to have a re-evaluation of your dream so the other one that you can type in is the drillers offsider and you can have a look at the different drilling companies that are all looking for people and this just shows you what i mean about the wages going up when there weren't people if you go back and have a look at the videos the job hunt videos that i did a few years ago so three years ago or even four years ago now, you'll see that all these people are used looking for drillers offsiders, but the wages used to be 90 to 110. Now they're 110 to 130 or 125. That's purely because there's that much work around, they need bums in seats, and they just have to pay more to get more people. It's just as simple as that. So again, you know, that used to be 90 to 110, now it's 100 to 125. It's, um, it's just supply and demand. So if we have a look at our next one, which is utility, I always put FIFO after this when I look for utility utility jobs, because if you don't, you get a lot of the um, utility jobs that are in town. Um, but you'll see the contracts start um, when you're going into the contractor, not working for the company. They, they, they talk about 32 and $48 an hour on that, which sounds like really good money, but that's going in as labor hire. So you don't get any annual leave and you don't get any um, sick leave or anything like that. So, you know, you're probably looking at a very temporary job for stuff like that. Again, that's 35 to $37 an hour on labor hire. And if you come down to Dexu where are we where did i see that ad before right here yep so 80 to ninety thousand dollars a year for full time two and one on 12 hours a day so seventy five thousand a year on two and one is 25 dollars an hour so at eighty thousand dollars a year it's probably 26 dollars an hour 50 for a full-time job so just be aware of that the unfortunately the um the Utility jobs, they don't pay that well when you go full time. You have to be labour hire for them to pay a little bit of money. And obviously, you know, you can be um, left short if you're labour hire sometimes with some of the things that can happen. Uh, much better having a full time job. But the full time utility jobs, they don't pay that much. And if you're thinking about jumping in and thinking, I'll get a utility job and that'll lead to a production job, I can tell you, like in my 30 years of mining, you know, I can count on one hand the amount of people I've seen jump from a utility job 
job into a production mining job. Unfortunately, jobs like utility and shutdown, they just tend to lead to more utility and shutdown jobs because it doesn't actually teach you anything that you're actually going to learn on the that you need to know about the mine site to actually work on the mine site or do any of the jobs on the mine site. And that's why um, the training got written that we've got back in the day. And um, I'm really pleased about this that I can show you. We've been written up in the Australian Mining Review. So you can um, jump on here and have a look. And it just talks about how to make yourself an easy win for mining employers. And the way to make yourself an easy win for mining employers is learning how the mine works so you can actually have a proper conversation with them because when you can talk to them about refuge chambers and stench gas and cap lamp signals and everything else that they need you to know to leave you alone um, it just changes the goalposts for them because it means they can get you up to speed a lot quicker than somebody that's coming in completely green so we've got um, the wall of fame page here that you can have a look at that's in the courses column about halfway up down um, just above it is the mining jobs to apply for page that you can have a look that's where we load up all the jobs that we think you should be applying for once you've done the training but as you can see people write in and tell us you know how they got jobs where they got jobs from all that sort of stuff there's a few people that have sent videos in that you can have a look at um, but they all say the same thing. The whole reason that I got the job was because I was able to talk to the employer or the, the foreman in the interview, the employer, about how their mine works. So they were happy to give me a go. And these are the different packages that you can do, the work ready, the three-step plan and the do-it-yourself. If you want to start off with the do-it-yourself and upgrade to a work ready or a three-step plan, we've got those buttons so you can do it. You can make the upgrade to the work ready or the three-step plan if you want help. Um, but a lot of people just start out doing the DIY, learn the information and get the job from there. So that's the mining prices. Gold's really high, coal's still low iron ores in the middle makes for a good market where there's lots of jobs around as long as you're looking in the right place um, lots of gold mines all over the country as we covered as you can see there's lots of stuff in every state that you've got opportunity and it's just a matter of giving the employers what they want somebody that knows how their mine works so I, I hope you found that um, information helpful and we'll start trying to do this on a weekly basis to keep you updated with the prices and just give you a little bit of a lesson about how the mining industry works each week and if you could like the video and share it around and subscribe the channel thanks